All right, let's look at reactions of nitriles. So nitriles among our carboxylic acids and derivatives are the least, react, or re, the least reactive except for carboxylates. And that's because of the thermodynamic stability of their triple bond and that decreased polarity of CN versus CO, oxygen being more electronegative, carbonyls being a little bit more attractive to reaction, okay? So if we look, we can explain the increased uh, reactivity of the acid halides and acid anhydrides by the identity of their leaving groups. So we've got two stable uh, anions here that are conjugate bases of strong acids, so they're very stable, going to be easy to eliminate. Uh, acetate is the conjugate base of a uh, weak acid, but due to resonance it's fairly stable, and so these typically can be reacted without activation by weak nucleophiles or good nucleophiles. If we look at esters and carboxylic acids, their leaving groups are poor, so they're going to require strong nucleophiles um, or acid activation. And if we look at amides, they have a resonance effect, our least reactive being uh, our last three here, the least reactive of the derivatives. Uh, amides have a resonance contributor that decreases the uh, attraction of that carbonyl by increasing its electron density um, versus other carboxylic acid derivatives, that stable resonance contributor. Nitriles, again, have that thermodynamic stability um, of the CN triple bond and reduced polarity. All right, let's look at the reactions here. So reactions forming nitriles, we're gonna have a, a limited scope of, of reactions uh, for this less reactive functional group, but we do have um, reaction of an amide with thionyl chloride, and so that uh, the amides video takes care of that mechanism. We get a nice nitrile with the carbonyl carbon becoming the nitrile carbon in the product. All right. Now, uh, substitution reactions can also form nitriles. And so if we take sodium cyanide or some cyanide um, source, we can then react it on a primary or secondary carbon with a good leaving group. So we'd consider the cyanide ion to be a strong nucleophile but a weak base. So it is perfect candidate for SN2 substitution to form a nitrile. For cyanohydrins, um, it's kind of a hybrid functional group here, not technically called a nitrile, but it does have that same CN triple bond feature, so we will talk about it here. Uh, we would add excess cyanide ion and HCl to get our cyanohydrin. Now let's look at the mechanism for this since it's not included elsewhere uh, to this point. And so if we have our good nucleophile, we can add it directly to the carbonyl and we get our intermediate. Now our intermediate is uh, reversible here. The best leaving group um, or excuse me, the, the cyanide ion is a good leaving group, and so it could easily just reform the carbonyl and kick back off, making this first step uh, highly reversible, okay? So the way we get by with that is we have a strong acid that is present, not so much that it protonates all our HCN, so we have an excess of cyanide to prevent that from happening. We'll highlight our bond here, but we protonate that oxide there to get to our cyanohydrin uh, product. And so we can represent that like this, okay, and we get our cyanohydrin. Now, uh, reactions of nitriles, hydrolysis is our number one mechanism here that we see. So it's um, like any other carboxylic acid derivative, it can be hydrolyzed back to a carboxylic acid. We're only going to see acid conditions for the hydrolysis of nitriles, however. So let's have a look at the mechanism. I'm going to highlight this CN triple bond. We don't have a good nucleophile in solution, so we're going to need to activate by protonating the lone pair on nitrogen. Now that we've activated, the carbon becomes more attractive to a poor nucleophile like water. It's good enough once activation has occurred. If 
this point, our best, um, or at least our leaving group here, water, needs to be deactivated, or it will get kicked back off. And it does, it's all happening in equilibrium here. But we want to get to a point where we are hydrolyzing. So we get to this point. And now, we have a nucleophilic nitrogen that can react with hydronium. activating this CN double bond for reaction. And if we attack with a water molecule, we can now start to see our carboxylic acid form. We have a tetrahedral intermediate finally, but the best leaving group is the nucleophile we just added. So I'd like to grab that, remove that proton, and now we have a tetrahedral intermediate with no good leaving group. Ultimately, we're trying to get rid of that nitrogen because we're in a hydrolysis reaction. So let's protonate there. And now we've activated, let me get rid of that carbon symbol there. Don't have to have it. Now we've got a good leaving group. We can push this through with enough heating, kicking off that um, ammonia leaving group and we form our carboxylic acid. It's protonated. And that ammonia that we just formed, just like amide hydrolysis, will quickly react with the protonated carboxylic acid to irreversibly form ammonium, or at least to a high degree, enough to drive this thing on to the end and then our carboxylic acid is formed. Okay, We can also react nitriles with reducing agents, hydride reducing agents. Sodium borohydride uh, can work, but lithium aluminum hydride, more potent agent for a less reactive functional group, uh, might be more appropriate here. So let's go ahead and show the mechanism. A sodium borohydride reduction would be very similar. But if we um, look here, aluminum hydride has an octet of electrons but a negative one formal charge because it's like boron, it's a group three element like BH4 minus, but it will donate that hydride kicking up a lone pair onto nitrogen. So we just put a hydride on, but now we've got a negative charge on our nitrogen we um, have ALH3, it's a nice Lewis base, a nice Lewis acid, so these can connect together. Aluminum still has three hydride equivalents, it just took a negative one formal charge. You can donate an additional hydride kicking up the lone pair back onto nitrogen. And at this point, we are highly basic conditions. And we would appear to be, we would appear to be at an impasse here um, with our second addition of hydride there. Um, so we add hydronium to solution, or excuse me, water in step two, which can then protonate that nitrogen.
water can then attack aluminum removing our hydride reagent and then finally another equivalent of water can react to form our amine. Nitriles can also be reduced by catalytic hydrogenation with hydrogen gas and rainy nickel uh, to a primary amine. Okay, and this is a metal mediated um, syn addition, just like we saw with our other catalytic hydrogenations and will not require a mechanism for the course.